now. Somewhere in America, Donald, thank you very much for being with us, and welcome back to the Savage Nation. My audience loves you. It is so good to be back with you, always, always. Don Donald, I know you have very little time. I'm going to get right to four questions. One, what would you do right now to stop ISIS if you were president? I would hit them so hard that you wouldn't even believe it. We would hit them every which way. We have to demean, you know, there has to be a demeaning like I watched today where all the networks are calling this uh, wise guy a, a mastermind, the mastermind behind the attack. What's the mastermind? They walk into a place, nobody has guns. They walk into a place, they shoot everybody. He's a mastermind. We have to demean these people. We can't call people masterminds when they're savages. They're just uh, savage, to use a very familiar term. <laughs> That's I, traumatic I, for I, me. You don't want to be associated but, but, with them. <laughs> no, no, I get it, but... I agree with you 100%. In World War II, we had a propaganda campaign against Nazis and the Japanese. We demeaned them. We humiliated them with propaganda. Instead, we have vermin in the media who glorify them. Topic two, Mr. Trump, when you are president, when you are president, not if, when you are president, would you deport all the Muslim refugees that Obama is rushing into America? Well, you know, I said that uh, four weeks ago. I said, if they come, I'm just putting everybody on notice that if they come, they are going to be deported. Now, it's a very sad thing, and I have a bigger heart than any of them, but we have no choice. We can't. We're a country that has nothing but problems, including $19 trillion in debt. We have nothing but problems. I said, if they come, they will go back if I win. Now, we should build a, f a safe zone along with everybody else. You know, the Gulf states aren't putting up anything. You look at the money they make with the oil and everything else. They don't take anybody. They don't put up any money. They said, why should they when the dumb United States and other countries will do it? Look at what she's done to Germany. So I would hit them so hard. And don't forget, on your show last time, I said, and I've been saying it for two years, hit the oil, hit the oil, right? I always said, I actually said hit the oil and take it. But right. hit the oil because you take away their wealth, and that's where they get a lot of their money. The oil that they took over that we gave them when we left. You know, when we left, we gave them so much. It's just not only military, but we gave them everything. So I said, hit the oil. Now, about two days ago, they started hitting the oil. Does anybody say thank you, Donald? Nobody. I've been the only one. I was, I was taking abuse. They said, oh, that's such a horrible thing to say. But yeah. now they're hitting the oil. It's Donald, let me ask you something. This is a tough, here is a tough question, but I've been covering it for days because I'm convinced I have my own conclusions. I want yours. What do you think is Obama's real reason for flooding America with Muslims from Syria right now when 30 states say no? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine, and obviously some people think it's evil intentions. I think personally it's incompetence, but, you know, regardless, I, a lot of people think it's evil intentions. Do you know if you're a Christian, and this is before this problem, if you were a Christian in Syria, it was virtually impossible to come into our country. If you were a Muslim in Syria, it was one of the easiest ways to come into the United States. I don't know if you've ever heard that. And Oh, I know, I know, I know. He, you know that there was a Syrian Christian family in, in San Diego that was already here with relatives, and he deported them about three weeks ago? If you're a Christian, it's very hard to get into this country. And if you are a Muslim, it's very easy. And if you come from Syria being a Muslim, now, if you think of it, if you're president, the Christians are having their heads cut off, and those people found it almost impossible. I mean, it's not, it's not me saying it. Statistically, very, very hard for a Christian from Syria to get in before this whole big mess that we have right now. Donald, on the campaign trail, you took a lot of heat recently for attacking Carson. I criticized you on the show saying I still support you for two reasons, and I don't want to go backwards. I'd rather go forwards. Do you think that in the future all Republican candidates should agree to attack Hillary and Obama, not each other, during future debates? Wouldn't that be wise? I do, Mike. I know what you said. I know you and I have had a great relationship, but I don't. But at some point, you know, I have to lay out facts. I mean, I have to lay out facts. I'm doing very well in the polls, as you know, and I'm number one. But he's sort of number two. I think he's losing a lot of steam, if you want to know the truth, because if you look at front page of many newspapers today, he had a very bad week because he's having a hard time learning anything about foreign policy, which you don't want, Michael, and I don't. But all I did last week was quote things in his book because he said he has pathological disease and a lot of other things. And you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, but, but it, was, it, was so, it was so brutal. I mean, you must have been a heck of a street fighter in Queens because you know how to get a guy on the ground and really let him have it, Donald. What I'm saying is a lot of people love you and they, they really like 
uh, him. They're not going to vote for him. They want you to win. I personally think that on a campaign uh, in front of these these people in the media, you shouldn't fall into their trap and always turn the question back to Hillary's failures as secretary of state. You know that she created this mess in the world through her Arab Spring. You know that by bringing down Gaddafi and killing him when he said don't do it because it'll create chaos and you'll have refugees pouring into Europe. She owns this problem and yet it never comes up during the debates, Donald. The world blew up around her. She was a terrible secretary of state, maybe the worst ever, but I have to beat 15 people. Now, Jindel left, as you saw. You know, he had zero. But Jindel yeah. is gone. So, yeah. you know, I have, to, I have to win before I can get to her. Believe me, I think she's going to be easy. She has such a bad record. I think she's going to be easy. <laughs> when it's, I love it. You know, but you have to get there first. We have 15 people in a race, and we have to get there first. And one by one, they whittle down. But all I did is hit Carson on things that he said in his book. Now, he wrote the book before he was running for office, I guess, but it was pretty bad stuff that he wrote in the book. So, But I understand. A couple of other people, they said, you don't have to say that. But I felt I had to get the word out because people didn't know. I mean, they didn't know. So You, you know, I thought, I thought that after I criticized you on air, and I, I did it as delicately as I could, that I wouldn't be eating lettuce at Mar-a-Lago ever again. Uh, but I'm glad to see that you're a bigger man than I am, and you came back on the show because you can take criticism. And by the way, that's more than most politicians are willing to do, Donald. You know and I know that most politicians are so skin-thinned, <laughs> thin-skinned, that if you dare say one word about them that they don't agree with, they excommunicate you. And you did not do that with me, i got to tell you that. No, I, I, you know, look, I understand that you were unhappy about that, but, you know, your show's always been good. You've always been good to me, other than the last couple of weeks. You didn't like what I said, but at some point, hey, why, are you a non-competitive person? You wouldn't do it. You would have done it five times worse than I did it, okay? <laughs> you well, if, I were, if I were in your place and I had a chance to, to knock Carson, to, I think that what gets you about Carson is that he acts like such a knight. I think what was getting your goat, looking back, knowing kind of a little bit more about you as you've uh, evolved on the campaign trail, is that you didn't like him getting away with it. He's such a nice guy and so sort of unaggressive when under the surface you're saying there's a monster lurk, lurking under the surface. I, it was that sort of what, what it was? He's got some deficiencies, and they're pretty big, and I wanted to let him know. And, and you understand that. You would have been worse than me, I'm telling you, okay? I know you too well, Michael. You know, you're trying to be like this nice guy. Don't hit. Since when don't you hit people hard? You, you know... <laughs> If you, if, by the way, if you hit people hard, your show wouldn't be the success it is either. So, <laughs> it's always good to do your show. You know that. Well, let me. Are you going to be it? Are you going to be in Florida this winter for Christmas? I know you're normally there, but this is a different year. You think you're going to get down there? All over. You know, where I'm going now, Massachusetts, and then I'm going to Iowa. Then I'm going to New Hampshire. Then I'm going to South Carolina. I'm all over the place. I'm going. How do you? How do you do? Where do you get the energy from? How do you do this? You know, over the years that I've been in radio. People have said, run for office. I don't have the energy for it. I can do this show. How do you do it? Is it the meatloaf? What is it? I don't know. I, I, I've asked that question all the time, and where do you get it? And I guess I can only say from my mother and my father. You know, they've had a lot of energy, and I, that's the only thing I can think of. Because I do have a schedule that a lot of people, even I have these young people traveling with me, secured. They can't handle it. I mean, you know, after... <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell me about it. I know all about it. My staff would agree with that one. No, but I happen to know that you like meatloaf. I know it's on your menu. It's called Donald's Favorite Dish. It must be your diet, Donald. That's true. Well, I have meatloaf. I like the basics. I like the basics in life. But we're gonna have a great. So I'm going to New Hampshire. I'm going to right now. I'm going to, and literally as soon as I finish this call, I'm going up to Massachusetts and then to New Hampshire. And you know, look, I'm having a good time doing it. You know what I'm seeing, Mike? I'm seeing tremendous love. People want to see the country come back. They're so tired of losing. We never win anymore. If you think of it, do we ever win? We lose on trade. We lose on ISIS. We lose on the Iran deal. We never no, when you have a loser when you have a loser in the White House, you lose on everything. I look, Donald, this is the thing. We know that you're gonna win the Republican uh, uh campaign or whatever it's called, and you're gonna debate Hillary. Do you feel that you can really get to her no matter no matter because you know it's gonna be stacked against you. Do you feel you can defeat her in the final in the final series of debates? Republican, but you know, numbers are coming out where I'm I'm beating her in all these states. They just had three or four states come out just today. Where I'm beating her in all the states. I mean, I'm I'm doing really well against her individually. I'm doing well against the field, the Republican field, which I have to beat. In all fairness, my, I have to beat the Republican field. Unfortunately, I have to beat them first before I get to her. 
but I'm doing really well. I'm leading in every poll, leading in just about every state. I think every state. So we're going to, you know, keep your head down because it's still a long way to go. Not so long, though. You know, it was, it was a year, and now it's, uh, there were six months, and now it's literally less than 90 days before you get to Iowa. And Donald, we'll last Iowa question. We, we learned this morning that Russia is sending in 150,000 brave Russian troops to crush them like bugs. How do you feel about that? Uh, I think that Russia has been amazing in what they're doing because they're fighting to win. They're fighting to win. And if you remember what I said two weeks ago, I said, look, if Russia wants to bomb ISIS, let them. We had these people, these stupid people that said, oh, well, we want to take the lead. We were, Who the hell cares who takes the lead? Let them spend their money. They've got bogged down in Afghanistan. They got bogged down before. They, it broke up. This, uh, you know, people don't realize it yeah. broke up the Soviet Union, okay? Yep. They got so yes. down there. That's what happened to the Soviet They ran out of money. Let them go and bomb. I think it's wonderful that they bomb ISIS, and it's great. And now it turned out I was right. You know, I was 100% right. But let them. You know, when they knocked down the Russian aircraft, that was a mistake, I want to tell you, because he's not fighting a war the way Obama fights the war. You know, little pinpricks. He is really bombing the hell out of them. So, Donald, before you go, I've got to give you something for the campaign trail, because I do this for a living. We read the other day that the U.S. bombed 118 ISIS fuel trucks, and I said, great, there's been a change finally from Obama. But then I read the fine print. Do you know that he made the Air Force drop leaflets telling the ISIS truck drivers to get out that bombs were going to fall? Did you know that? Did it, does anyone know that he did that? No, I had I'd never heard that. I, I think, I don't look. What? I'm going to send you the, Donald, i got to send you the article because this is something for your campaign trail. This is going to make people think twice about this guy. This is not as clear as it may be of he's just a pacifist or a liberal. There's something more here, Donald. At least we in the talk radio sphere see that. I won't take up any more of your time other than to say, go, Donald, go. We're behind you 100%, and we hope that you go all the way. I will, and I'll, I'll do my best, and hopefully I'll get it there, and you'll be very proud of me. I'll tell you what, we will have lots of victories together, but we're going to have lots of victories, that I can tell you. Thank you, Donald Trump. Good luck. God be with you. The time is 46 minutes after the hour. I'll be right back.